After playing Rogue for a while, I thought for myself, oh man, pressing buttons sucks, and taking damage is so annoying. So I decided it was time. Time to make the most brain-dead build in Diablo 4. Yeah, that's right, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. The only build in Diablo 4 where you can watch your favorite YouTuber, chug a beer, throw on some big titty Twitch streamer, play with your family jewels all at once, and at the same time, crush all content in the game. It's the spin to win Whirlwind Barbarian build, of course. The absolute perfect build for when you don't want to give a shit anymore, but still blast through tier 100s like a beast. All right, so you too want to start losing brain cells by the minute, huh? Great, let's see how this amazing build works now, so you too can become dumb as fuck such as myself. Firstly, the build uses Whirlwind. Hmm, think I may have said this earlier. The build is definitely getting to me. To make the build as easy as possible, the build also runs Triple Shout, as they can be used while spinning. When combined with cooldown reduction on both helmet and amulet, along with the bold chieftain's aspect, we can reduce the cooldown of Wrath of Berserker as low as possible for maximum DPS. For last skill, the build also uses charge. Now you're probably like, buttons to press? Yeah, I know, but it's quite important. By grabbing this, we can easily get our fury up whenever it drops, as well as to grant us a permanent 40% extra damage via the Tobolt's will. In this build, we're also using Dual Wield for our Spin to Win ability. This is so we can benefit from the Ramaladni's Magnum Opus. By using this, we gain a shit ton of damage by stacking Maximum Fury. So if you're currently rocking a Hammer of the Ancients build, you can easily swap to this one. What's sexy about this build is also the fact that we can rock 100% crit chance via the dire whirlwind aspect. And only watching crits is something my Zug Zug Barbarian brain definitely enjoys looking at. All right, friends, now you have all of the basics. Let's dive straight into the gear and aspects making this dumb build work. Firstly, we're rocking the Shako, of course. If you don't have it, then you can lick my balls. Ah, just kidding, fam. Simply grab the Tusk Helm of Joritz and your Gucci, you goddamn legend. For chest, we definitely want to rock a defensive one as we want to be able to stand in as much stupid shit as possible. The stats that you're looking for here are the same as mine, where total armor and max life are the most important. You're also going to smack on a juggernaut aspect because why the hell not? Using armor here, as well as the Juggernaut aspect, will easily get you to the armor cap of around 14,000. For gloves, these can suck a dick. What you actually want are of course crit chance, as well as strength, all stats and ranks to whirlwind. You don't benefit at all from attack speed or overpower, which is why these can suck it. As aspect, however, we want to use aspect of berserk ripping for some extra damage over time. I'd also like to mention that Gore's devastating grips can also be used if you find a pair with decent rolls on it. As pants, you already know what we're using, unless you skipped the intro, of course. Shame on you if you did, since it's extremely imperative that you watch the entire video due to unspecified reasons. Any whore? We're using Tibolt's will here, of course. Try to find a pair with a high rolled aspect as well as high roll in the maximum resource stat. For boots, this is where you throw all of those boring ass resistances and a movement speed roll. I have, however, done something quite amazing for you, and that is I've added fire resistance in the Paragon board. So you can ditch fire resistance here and instead grab movement speed after killing elites, as it would allow you to hit the movement speed cap despite spinning. Spinning reduces movement speed by 30%, by the way, if you didn't know. All right, now let's check out the weapons. But first, we're gonna try to prioritize some stats here. As we'll be running near 100% crit chance in this build, we want as much crit damage as possible. Other insane stats are strength and all stats and also damage while berserking. 
and for the Big Daddy Bonker, we'll be using the dire whirlwind aspect for that mad crit chance. When it comes to the dual wield weapons, you're going to be using swords for the crit damage and use Ramaladnis in one hand. To use two one-handers, however, you'll have to get the dick out of your hands and grab another sword with aspect of elements on it. For the last weapon, you're going to want a two-handed sword. If you don't have the granddaddy, and if you're sick of killing this fat fuck, then you can simply imprint an edge master's aspect here. Now for the amulet, you'll be able to grab a bunch of great stats. The ones to prioritize here are movement speed and cooldown reduction. For the other stats, however, you can either go with damage or defensives. Damage reduction and ranks to counter-offensive are fucking sick, for example. When it comes to the rings, you'll want to look for the same stats on both of them. Mine are not great, and the stats that you actually want are crit chance, max fury, damage while berserking, and either crit damage or maximum life, depending on if you want defensives or big damn. For the aspects, I'm using aspect of ancestral charge to make it easier to reset our charge ability and also bold chieftain's aspect to reset the cooldown of our shouts. Great job, friends. Gear and aspects done. Let's check out my awesome stone collection and weapon mastery now. Firstly, we're using two-handed axe as weapon mastery as it's giga-busted. When it comes to the stone collection, I've killed this annoying fuck a million times and still haven't got the genesis. Rest in peace, my sanity, I guess. As first stone, we're using the Tempest due to the high attack speed. We're also using resource support here to solve any fury region issue we may have, and then we're using safeguard to not fucking die Lamau. I do have Evernight here, but if you don't, then you can also use efficiency support to get that last bit of crit chance up to 100%. For the right-hand side, we have Flash of Adrenaline. As usual, we're also using duration and tactical support to increase its duration, and we also have Fortify support here as our main source of Fortify. If you have Genesis, however, then just ditch Safeguard and put Fortify support there instead. Well, that was my stones. Now is definitely a good time to subscribe, because when we're done with my amazing skill tree, you'll be so goddamn ecstatic you won't know what buttons to press. The basic skills can suck a fat juicy 10-incher, the core skills is what we're after. Max out Whirlwind and grab Enhanced and Violent Whirlwind for more Fury Regen and Big Dam. We're grabbing a ton of skills here. Three points in Imposing Presence and Martial Vigor for maximum defense, and then Rallying Cry, along with Enhanced and Tactical Rallying Cry for some easy, unstoppable, and free fury. We're also picking up Outburst and Tough as Nails here, as this will be our main source of infecting enemies with bleeds. And we need bleeds for our Paragon board. We also have Challenging Shout here, along with Enhanced Challenging Shout for both defensives and a way to reset our cooldowns. In the brawling skills, we start by picking up War Cry for that mad DPS. We also grab Enhanced and Power War Cry for some easy berserking and big dam. Booming Voice increases the duration of our shouts, which is nice to have. Then grab Charge along with Enhanced and Power Charge so we get some easy unstoppable. Charge also grants us berserking via Battle Fervor. Lastly, we're grabbing Prolific Fury for better Fury Regan and Swiftness to be fast as fuck boy. The Weapon Mastery skills are shit, so we're not interested in those. We do, however, get some nice passives here. Pit Fighter for damage and damage reduction, and Counter Offensive for big dam. We then head on over to the Ultimate Skills and pick up Wrath of the Berserker for more damage and Tempered Fury for yet more damage. Invigorating Fury also keeps us alive, granting us huge amounts of self-healing. And lastly, the key passive. For maximum damage, you definitely want to use the Unbridled Rage passive. If you want to just hold down Whirlwind constantly, however, then you can also use Unconstrained. But that's lame, 
You know me. I always go for the big damage skills. All right, nicely done. Only the Paragons and some gameplay left then. There will be some minor tweaks you can do in the Paragon board if you wish, but don't worry, my friends. I'll show you exactly where. In the starting board, I'm using the Martial Glyph, as this is how our shouts reset our cooldowns. I then head on over to, to the Warbringer board, tell the Legendary Node to eat shit, and socket Wrath. Not only does this provide huge scaling for crit damage, but it also allows us to keep spinning without running out of fury. In this board is also where we have some maximum fury for damage and fire resistance in case you want to use movement speed after killing elites on your boots. You could even use this if you don't, however, since it also grants us max life. After that, we go to the Blood Rage board. This legendary node here is extremely important as it transforms our damage while berserking into multiplicative damage. We also socket exploit here as our main source of vulnerability. Next we go to the carnage board. This is where I'm socketing ire as we can get a whopping 75 strength for the glyph here. Then head on over to the last board, the decimator board. Grab the legendary node for some extra damage and socket the territorial glyph for both damage reduction and damage to close enemies. Goddamn, Paragon done. Only how to get good left. Make sure to listen closely now, because it's extremely important that you play this build correctly. And just kidding, of course, just bash your head as hard as possible on the keyboard and you're good to go. Like most other barbarian builds, am I right? Yeah, any barbarian haters in the chat? Nah but at least try to charge every four seconds to keep the Tibold's will up, or if you want to close some gaps. Other than that, you just press all of your buttons. If you're lacking gear, however, then I would suggest saving challenging Shout for Elite packs so you don't die. Well, that's all for me. Stay awesome, kings, and I'll see you in the next video.